Hello, I'm Shane Thomas from WeekendHandicapper.com. Today is 2015 Preakness Stakes Day. In this video, we're going to break down how I think the 2015 Preakness will play out, and I'll give you my picks and my analysis. So let's start off with number one, American Pharaoh. Certainly the horse to beat. Proved a lot of people right in the Kentucky Derby. Most people project him to win this race, the Preakness, and continue on to the Triple Crown. Now, the, he draws the number one post, which is a concern for some, but not me. I, don't, I think he's too good of a horse to overcome that. So he is the horse to beat. I don't know if he's the horse to bet if you're trying to make money off this year's Preakness. Number two, Dortmund, a horse that I really liked in the Kentucky Derby, kind of disappointed me, really wasn't many excuses for Dortmund, but today's shorter distance and his tactical speed might prove different. He might turn the tables on American Pharaoh and the other horses and get it done today, so I'm certainly not giving up on number two, Dortmund. Number three, Mr. Z, early speed, D. Wayne Lucas. I think he's won like six Preaknesses, so he knows how to train a horse for this race. He made me a very happy man when Oxbow won, a horse that Dwayne trained. It was a good day on that day when Oxbow took the lead and never looked back. Uh, Mr. Z is sort of a similar type of horse, but I don't think he can hang on like Oxbow did. So. It's a good horse to use in your exotics, your Zactus, Trifecta, Superfectas, but I think he's going to falter at the end. These other more quality horses are going to pass him. But you might want to include him in your exotics. Number four, Danzig Moon, the closer, probably the closer of all closers in this race. So if you can project the speed is going to be early, or excuse me, fast enough that closers can close in, then Danzig Moon has a really good shot of winning, certainly in second, third, or fourth position. So definitely include Danzig Moon. Number five, Tel Aviv. The only horse to win at today's distance, but I think I need more than that to consider this horse, Tel Aviv, a contender. Number six, I'm gonna butcher this name, so excuse me, Bodhisattva, maybe, I'm, I'm thinking. What, however you pronounce it, I don't mean no disrespect, but number six, the number six horse. He's a horse for course horse. He's been on this track before. He could be a, a long shot underneath, and that's maybe the key to this year's Preakness, finding these bombs that can round out your Zactas, Trifectas, and Superfectas. So number six, Bodhisattva. Not a contender, a factor to win the race, in my opinion, but maybe one of those horses can, that can enable you to make a profit off of this otherwise chalky race. Number seven, Divining Rod. There's a lot of fans of Divining Rod, but I don't see it. I'm going to try to beat, um, not only beat him, but kind of keep him out of the exotics in favor of longer priced horses that I think could have a shot. Number eight, firing line. I love this horse. The horse ran his heart out. He, he, he tried if he would have swe switched leads. And if you watch the 2015 Kentucky Derby replay, you could kind of tell the horse looked weird kind of running. He was getting tired, of course, probably. But when, when they say a horse is on his wrong lead, they're supposed to actually switch leads, which means switch their, their legs, which one they're leading with. Fiery line didn't do that. Usually when a horse does, it's almost like shifting gears in a way. You switch those leads, might give you a little bit more energy and more stamina to get the finish line, in which Fiery line almost did, almost held off American Pharaoh. So I'm not giving up on Fiery line. I think he's definitely got a sh shot. So here we go. How do we play this year's Preakness? Now, it's going to be tough. On paper, this looks like a very chalky, in horse racing terms, that means, you know, the favorite, the short price horses should, should win the race. And that's certainly probably going to be true. American Pharaoh, Dortmund, Firing Line, 
that is going to be pretty formful in that, that respect. On any other day, I would pass this race. I would say, forget this race. Let's look for more value in other races, try to get some prices. But since it's one of the Triple Crown races, it's tradition, you, in a way you have to play it usually, uh, just to say you played it. So it comes down, in my opinion, to two different ways that you can beat American Pharaoh or attempt to beat American Pharaoh. That's in the win position. So what horses can win instead of American Pharaoh? Just like the Derby, I think Dortmund, number two Dortmund and number eight firing line at a shorter distance, their early speed might be able to hold off American Pharaoh to win the 2015 Preakness. Others, there's some saying Danzig Moon, if the pace is fast enough, I don't think it's going to be that crazy fast where a closer can actually win the race. But some people say Danzig Moon, but for me it's number two, Dortmund, and number eight, Firing Line, to beat American Pharaoh. That doesn't mean that I don't, I don't believe American Pharaoh can't win it. He probably will, just like he was the favorite in the Kentucky Derby. But we're looking at this from a betting, gambling, and a wagering perspective. We got to try to beat him if you're going to try to make some money. In the win position, the second way to try to make some money off this year's 2015 Preakness is to include American Pharaoh, meaning he's winning the race, but you want to link him up with long shots or non, other non-favorite horses that can boost your price. To me, that's the only logical ways or practical ways that you can beat American Pharaoh and try to make some money. So when I say that, that means American Pharaoh would be number one or any other horse that you like. If you like Dortmund, who's going to be a, probably the second choice. If you like those horses to win, well then put some of my long shots or some long shots that you like. In my case, it would be number six and number four. Number six is Bodhisattva and number four is Danzig Moon. Put them underneath to, to close in on some of these quality horses. And then, and you can use them as keys. And when I mean by keys, I kind of explained this in an earlier video, that means you build other horses around these long shots that you think might finish fourth, third and second. So what that means is that if I love number six to at least factor in the one, two, three or fourth position, then put three or four horses that you like in the third position, put those horses in the second position and put your winners in the first. And then you would go back, make another ticket, put number six in the third position, those other three or four horses that you like in the fourth position, three or four horses that you like in the second position and your winners. To me, that's how you can possibly make money in this year's Preakness. I just think it's going to be pretty formful. Don't expect to pay off your mortgage after this year's Preakness. But make sound, smart wagering decisions and smart tickets, smart wagering strategies to try to eke out a profit any way you can. So to me... If you're going to try to beat American Pharaoh in the win position, it's going to come down to Dortmund and firing line. If you're going to include American Pharaoh in the win position, then please use some long shots like number six and number four and number uh, Mr. Z, who's number three, I'm pretty sure. Use those higher price horses underneath American Pharaoh to try to boost the profits. But it's going to be hard to make any decent profit in this year's Preakness stakes, but you could be witnessing history, enjoy the, the tradition of the Preakness, and let's hope that all horses and riders are safe and sound when they go around the track. So please subscribe to this YouTube channel, WeekendHandicapper.com. Check out my website, WeekendHandicapper.com. Get on my email list so you can get all my updates and picks and all kinds of tutorials and excellent resources. Have fun today. Enjoy the Preakness. Uh, if it rains, let me tell you this, if it rains and if the track, like I think they're predicting, might be a little sloppy, a little muddy, 
There's really no one horse or horses that kind of favor the muddy track more than others. You know, maybe tell a verve number five, you might want to give more credit to if it becomes rainy and muddy. But I think all these horses can handle the wet track. So Dortmund, Firing Line, number four, Danzig Moon, number six, Bodhisattva. I don't know why I keep making myself say that name. That will be some legitimate long shots along with Mr. Z underneath. And then good luck. Subscribe to the channel. Happy handicapping and smart wagering.